My name is Jaquel Knight, and I'm a dancer, I'm a choreographer, I'm a creative, I'm an artist. But when I disrupt the game, I shake the room and change the world, baby. I discovered my love of dance in my grandmother's living room. Growing up in the South, we always have a family reunion, a family cookout, a family something. And it's always music blasting and food cooking on the grill, uh, fish frying. Those were like my first moments of dancing, seeing my family dance. Atlanta was the hot spot when I was growing up. Just coming out the age of Freak Nick, you know, um, and then moving into just from Atlanta-based music to this new sound of crunk and bee. All of that played an influence on who I am. I've seen many styles of dance come through the city. I've seen the sound of Atlanta grow. Little John was a driving force of what it sounded like through all the eras from the bass, from Atlanta Crank. Be able to witness all of that as a child. The city has done a really great job at raising this little black boy right here. Remember the Times were one of my favorite videos. It was something about that dance break that Fatima had them do, 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 you know, it was something. <laughs> It was something about that dance break that you had to know it. And then that moves me into kind of what inspired me today and how I create movement. TLC Creep, you know, was a big video that you would do the dance to. Ah, that's creeping on the down low. <laughs> that was like the first sense of understanding social dancing and what simple choreography could do and everyone could do it, you know, but it just made you feel so good every time that hook came on you knew exactly what to do in those moments I had no clue I wanted to be a dancer and you know I honestly I really I guess I can say I didn't know dance was a job dance was a career even though I was seeing it at that moment I didn't know that was something you can do or something I was able to do being I, I was born in North Carolina raised in Atlanta I really didn't get it I had no glimpse that dance, choreography, music, creative, direction, all of that. I had no idea that was in my destiny at all. Throughout my middle school, high school career, I was a musician first. People knew me as a musician. I played saxophone, then I started playing mellophone. Um, I started writing music. You know, I just knew once I got into middle school, music was kind of my vibe. And then, Around my junior year of high school, my best friend, Tiffany, she took me to a dance workshop. At that moment, my world was flipped upside down. It was with Shane Sparks, Lorianne Gibson, Brian Friedman, Chuck Maldonado, and it just blew my mind that it was really a space where people who love dance as much as I did <laughs> could come and learn it and soon do it and get paid to do it. Right after that, um, we started our own dance troupe, True Styles Dance Troupe, which was a high school dance team, but we also performed outside of the high school. That started, was the first beginnings of me being a dancer, a choreographer, and creative director even. Once I graduated from high school, I moved to LA, and maybe within a year, Frank was holding the audition for Michelle Williams. And it was that audition that kind of set the tone for what would be our working relationship. Then from there, he was like, oh, can you come choreograph Michelle's entire promo tour? And after the whole Michelle Williams project wrapped, he said, I may have a gig for you in a few months, you know, keep doing your thing. You're awesome. You, ha you have a awesome future ahead of you, you know, but stand by, you know, if something comes up, I'll give you a call. Three or four months went by and I got the call. <laughs> got the call, like, got the call of calls, okay? <laughs> this is a call. And he was like, hey, I have this Beyonce record. Can you get to New York tonight? You'll stay for a few days. If she rock with you, you'll stay for the um, length of the project. You know, if she's not really feeling it, I'll get you back to LA and you know, I'll figure out what's next. I got to New York. 
that record for single ladies. Since single ladies, here we are now talking to you guys, and it has not stopped. I realized I had the power to shift people's mood a tad bit, I can say, in high school with my dance crew. We used to get so many people coming up to us half and saying, oh my gosh, you guys make my day. You know, I can feel your joy through you dancing, through your performance. And I'll say Single Ladies was kind of the first thing to go viral during this past, what, decade? You know, um, like the first of its kind viral moment. And to be able to see all kinds of people, black, white, yellow, brown, old, young, girls, guys, everyone in between, you know, everything, you know, seeing everyone do it, that blew my mind. At that moment, I realized there's something special about my gift. And if you use it wrongly, it would be accepted that way. So it was always on me to do right by it. It was definitely the moment of seeing the impact of single ladies that has made a shift in myself as an artist, you know, knowing that I'm able to shift the energy of the world. Creating during the pandemic, let alone creating something that goes down in the history books, besides it being one of the hardest things to do, it was quite natural task considering the state of the world, right? Considering the state of black culture at the time where we were creating. History was happening in front of our eyes. And I'll say if you weren't on the same side of history making and creating something, creating anything that wasn't going to last, it was no point in creating. My favorite moments from the BET Awards performance with Megan, I mean, it was the whole setup for me. <laughs> it's the whole thing for me. It's the being in the desert. It's not being in the studio. It's creating your own rules. It's the motorbikes. It's the scaffolding. It's the girls looking bomb. It's the <laughs> car. It's the confidence. I mean, that was our breakout performance. You know, that was the performance that started all performances. What people know Megan now as would not be if it wasn't for that BET performance. The Cardi and Megan Thee Stallion collab was a collab of the year. Let me just make sure I go on record saying that, you know, um, the collab of the year. And it was them trying new things. It was the rap, it was the rap girls coming for like culture, right? Bigger than pop culture, like coming for culture, period. To be in the middle of history and to have my hands in the Play-Doh, you know, because that would go down as a historic moment in music. Body, 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 yaddy, 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 yaddy. <laughs> body kits. It makes my people happy, you know, what the energy of that record, I remember Megan playing it for the first time for me, who was actually in the process of like getting all the BET Awards stuff together. And she was like, I have to play you this record, Quill, I gotta play you this record. Literally in the moment of her playing the record, I saw the movement instantly. You know, I saw how I wanted people to feel. I knew exactly the energy I wanted to convey through the choreography. So when it came time to put it on wax, it was easy. I wanted people to get up and dance. I wanted people to have a good time. I wanted everyone, you know, regardless of your race, your sex, your gender, you know, um, to be able to get up and feel good in your body, feel good in the skin you're in, and have a good time. Being a driving force of Black culture is a humbling position, right? To be able to be the face of all those black and brown people who look like me, all those kids who grew up in the hood, all those kids in the country, you know, people who don't know, people who don't know how the field works, how music works, how the entertainment industry works. Being able to put on and inspire those who look just like me, it feels good. It feels really damn good. Since I've started this whole journey as a choreographer and been able to inspire the world, you know, not only through my gifts and talents, you know, it's been really, really important to me to make sure I was able to just give, just be able to give. And through that birth, the Jaquel Knight Foundation, you know, which is on a mission to 
impact, encourage, and inspire the next generation of artists, the next generation of creators, the next generation of dancers, choreographers, directors, anyone in the arts field. And that came about last year, 2020. And through the pandemic, we launched our first initiative, which was the Dancers Relief Fund. It has been a truly inspiring and moving project. I say, if I can do that every day, if my life, <laughs> if I was able to give and just work at that every day, that's what I would be doing. I hope my legacy would be I was someone that inspired, someone that looked like you and inspired you to get up and get out and do something. You know, to be bold and go. To know that, you know, close your eyes to what you see and open them to what you don't. You know, I hope when I leave this place that people are still inspired by the name and the story of, the journey of. That's why I hope this legacy. Being a culture disruptor means to me is that I don't give a, <laughs> I don't care. And I think that's a huge part of being able to disrupt culture. You have to know that you have the power. I have the power to cause all this. I'm gonna go and set fire to this. I'm gonna blow that up, cause it's on me. I can do that. I can change the game, cause I wanna change the game. I'm Jaquil Knight and I'm a disruptor because I walk in boldness and greatness. And I know exactly who I am, baby.